Most of the time when people ask me about my job, they look rather confused when I tell them about information security. So I thought it might be a good idea to start this course with a simple question, what is information security? All right, as I just mentioned, I want to begin with the very basics and build a solid foundation, which will help you to better understand the ideas behind ISO 27001. In this lecture, we are going to talk about the following topics. First, we have a look at information in general before focusing on the term information security and the related security objectives. Let me begin this course with a great quote by Peter Sonnegard, who at the time of recording served as senior vice president for Gartner. He said, and I quote, information is the oil of the 21st century and analytics is the combustion engine. I guess we can all agree on the fact that rapidly accelerating technology advances have changed the world in unprecedented speed. Information is as precious as never before, and therefore it has become essential to the success of every organization. Information can be stored in different forms. As you can imagine, it can be stored in digital form, which is the most common form for information, for example, data files stored on a computer. A more traditional form is the material form, like paper files or letters. Unrepresented information describes information that is available in the form of knowledge of human beings. Please note that unrepresented information can easily be lost in case of employees leaving their employer. Only information and digital and material really belongs, belongs to an organization. Let's have a look at some more examples of information. The source code of an application is information in digital form as it is stored in a computer system. Same goes for data centers and mobile devices. Paper files represent material information and need, this is very important, the same amount of protection as digital information does. Knowledge of the organization plays a critical role in the success of an organization and needs to be considered when planning and implementing an information security management system as well. Information can be transmitted by various means, including courier, electronic, or verbal communication. Whatever form information takes, or the means by which it is transmitted, it always needs appropriate protection. In many organizations, information is dependent on information and communications technology. This technology is often an essential element in the organization and assists in facilitating the creation, processing, storing, transmitting, protection, and destruction of information. Nowadays, information is exposed to various threats that have the ability to disrupt critical business functions of an organization. We will get into more detail on current threats later on in this course, but for now let's agree on the fact that information needs proper protection. On this slide you can see the results of a survey on the future of cyber information security conducted by McKinsey in 2022. According to their research, the costs related to cybercrime are going to increase by 15% on an annual basis and reach $10.5 trillion a year in 2025. 85% of small and medium-sized enterprises intend to increase their IT security spending until the year 2023. 3.5 million positions on cybersecurity and information security are currently open. And finally, cyber insurance premiums are expected to grow dramatically. With this in mind, I would say that getting into information security is not a bad idea at all. All right, this finally leads us to, up to the term information security. According to ISO 27000, information security ensures the confidentiality, availability, and integrity of information. Now, information security involves the application and management of appropriate controls that involves consideration of a wide range of threats with the aim of ensuring sustained business success and continuity and minimizing consequences of information security incidents. Information security is achieved through the implementation of an applicable set of controls selected through a chosen risk management process and managed using an ISMS, including policies, processes, procedures, organizational structures, software, and hardware to protect the identified information assets. These controls need to be specified, implemented, monitored, reviewed, and improved to ensure that the specific information security and business objectives of the organization are met. 
confidentiality, availability, and integrity are considered as security objectives and are the reason why we need information security. They are often referred to as the CIA triad, which will hopefully help you remember all three of them even after finishing this course. Let's have a look at confidentiality first. Confidentiality is the property that information is not made available or disclosed to unauthorized individuals, entities, or processes. Let me explain this concept by using a simple example centered around Alice and Bob. Alice is about to send a message to Bob. However, the message she wants to send to Bob contains confidential information. In other words, she does not want anyone other than Bob to read it. Now imagine a third person somehow gaining access to the message after it has been sent. If the attacker manages to do so, he is able to read the content of this message and therefore the message is no longer confidential. This is what we call a violation of the confidentiality security objective and can have serious consequences depending on the nature and content of this message. So information security is about ensuring that information is not made available or it is closed to unauthorized entities. The second security objective is integrity. Integrity is defined as the property of accuracy and completeness. Don't worry, this may sound complicated, but it's not. Again, let's assume Alice wants to send another message to Bob. Just like before, an attacker is able to gain access to this message. We already know that this is a violation of confidentiality, but this time the attacker does not only read the message, the attacker also changes the content of the message and therefore violates its integrity. Bob will not receive the initial, the initial message of Alice. Instead, he receives an altered message without even knowing so. The initial message is no longer accurate or complete. This is integrity. Last but not least, availability is the third security objective, is the property of being accessible and usable on demand by an authorized entity. Information is usually stored on central database systems and is made available via network technology. Like many others, Alice and Bob are enjoying the flexibility and convenience of services provided via the internet. One of the services they are using is the online banking service of their bank. Both of them are relying on this service to pay their bills and secure their savings. If an attacker or any other threat is able to disrupt the provisioning of information, it can have serious consequences on organizations or society. Imagine the bank of Alice and Bob losing the information of the balance of their checking accounts. Information has to be available when needed. We just covered all three of the security objectives, and this takes us to the end of this lecture. Congratulations, you just finished the first lecture of this course. Let's have a look at the key learnings and I'll repeat what we just learned. Information is an asset that needs protection. Information exists in different forms like digital, material, or unrepresented form. Information security ensures the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of information. Confidentiality, integrity, and availability are often referred to as the CIA triad in our objectives of information security.